right, welcome. I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Interview Edition. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMacOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. And today we will talk to the man with the one of the best names in the game, Peter Diamond. And yes, his artwork shines like a diamond, sometimes at least. It is very cool nonetheless, and we will uh, talk about his career and the way he approaches posters and many, many other things. So stay tuned. Head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial to follow along with the art we are talking about or check us out on YouTube for the video version. And now let's get started. Peter, how are you doing today, man? Hey, good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, doing, doing my things. I had, had some teachings in the morning and uh, now, nice. um, now I'm here finally doing this with you. And one of the things is we're doing this midday and I know yep. your web address says CA for Canada. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're in the same time zone. What, what's up with that, my friend? I was, I was like, when you told me, and it says there Vienna, I was like, what? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, you're more perceptive than most to notice that CA is uh, Canada. <laughs> a lot, a lot of people don't even realize that. But yeah, I'm in Vienna. Um, I'm what you call a souvenir. A souvenir. There's, uh, there's a lot of us <laughs> here. I, basically, Austria has a, has a national. Um, English-speaking mail import program mm -hmm. where they send attractive young Austrians to various countries, you know, England, the United States, and uh, they bring dudes like me back to stay in Austria. So I see. that's my story. That's good. That's good to hear. I, I, I did not know. It's just, since when when are you in Austria, by the way, Zed? Uh, let me see. Uh, 2009. Uh, yeah, 2009. So... That's 12 years now, almost, not quite. Yeah, yeah that's, that's quite some time. That's interesting. That's like when I, uh, when I moved to Berlin, which, which was in 2007. So. Where, are, where are you from originally? Uh, from, from the Baltic Sea, so not, not like a different country, but oh, okay. I moved to Berlin yeah, to yeah. study nice. and stuff like nice. that. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> All righty. Um, let's get into a speed round. I think that's one of the, the, the cool new things that I um, uh, implanted here in, into the podcast for mm -hmm. 2021. And um, it's going to be rapid fire uh, word association kind of things. And um, yeah, what comes to your mind, you let us know. You can elaborate a little bit on it if you want to, but you don't have okay. to. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Here we go. We're going to start off right now with favorite holiday destination. Cousin. That's an island in the Seychelles. There you go. Uh, color. Red. Uh, favorite Avenger? Oh my goodness. Um, Black Widow. Black Widow. We had that last time too. Catherine Lamb said also Black Widow. Yeah. Funny. Black Widow's pretty awesome. Um, favorite Tarantino? Favorite Tarantino, Pulp Fiction. All right, there you go. Uh, coffee or tea? Tea, all the way. Author? Niall Ferguson. Okay. Actually, it might be Neil Ferguson. It looks like Niall, but okay. he's a Scot. So okay, there you go. Um, portrayal Landscape? Portrait. Uh, samurai or ninja? Samurai. Uh, favorite tool? Favorite tool? Pencil. Okay. Um, and uh, book? Book? Uh, well, The Square and the Tower. It's uh, That's what I'm reading right now, which is also why I answered uh, Niall Ferguson. Oh, that's there you go. There you go. <laughs> put, it, put in the plug-in. <laughs> yeah. And last but not least, but favorite tale or myth? Oh shit! Um, well, I, this is no longer stream of consciousness. That's too important a question. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna have to give a sort of a, uh, a cheating answer and say Arthur. Okay, I figured. I, it's not one story, but it's yeah, a character. I'll take it. And, I'll, take it. Yeah. I'll take it. The Arthurian legends—they are they are come a compendium of things. So. Yes. That's fine. Yes. <laughs> All right. There's some great answers. And um, I, I was really excited for what, what you're going to say for a favorite tale or myth, what, what you're going to pick. Because I'm, 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 There's so many. Yeah, I'm listening to this podcast, which is really cool for other people out there as well. It's called uh, Mythology. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it is basically, uh, it's called, it's, it's like part of the Paracast Network. And they have okay. mythic monsters, mythology, and tales, and they uh, basically tell the real story behind it. They like they the they combine. For example, when you look at the like uh, Red Red Riding Hood, 
they they mm-hmm. tell you like where does it come from and like all the gruesome stuff like which is left out uh, from the right, children's right, right. book stuff you yes, know yes um, yes yes and, and things like that so that's really cool Aladdin Aladdin is totally different he was like a he was like an asshole basically and he wished for like food and stuff and like weird things like for his family and there was actually a family he wasn't this like a street rat in this kind of case and and uh, things like that so that's um, like yeah really interesting a lot a lot of that stuff has been considerably uh cleaned up yeah and you know for me with with arthur that's actually a big part of my interest in it and um if anybody's seen the the images i've been doing with arthur they'll notice he's very different from uh in those images from the ones that you're that you're familiar with because there's a whole long history of very very different and much weirder stories about arthur from uh from old wales yeah and but the stuff that we know now is is a lot more tidy and I mean it's still great but yeah. very different. It changes a lot over time. Yeah, we're going to talk about Arthur in a second because that's one of the things of your artwork that I wanted to talk about, anyways. Perfect. And so so let's jump right into that. And uh, the first one uh, or the, the 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 artwork I'm showing right now is um, Arthur and the Black Toad. That's uh, yes. one of your artworks you did, which is really amazing. And I have to say. Um, your Arthurian depiction with the red hair um, mm-hmm. and the beard and stuff, it reminded me of, um, I, I forgot the actor's name, but the one from Game yeah. of Thrones. I know I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Several people have uh, have said that. Yeah. So is, is, yeah, he's got that big, the big beard and yeah. everything for is, sure. Is there going to be a movie version <laughs> with, with this guy playing him? <laughs> well, let's see. Let's cross our fingers. <laughs> But yeah, um, t- tell me more about uh, the the artwork here. What um, where does it come from, really, or like where did where how do, how do you get in touch with it, and how did like what's the approach on this one? Right. Okay. So um, I guess the first thing I should say is if if I were to tell you the whole story of how I got there to drawing mm-hmm. that, it, it's it's too it's it goes too deep and too far back. Uh, but <laughs> it's a legend itself. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, it's a whole quest. Yeah. Trust me. Uh, but. Basically, I discovered at some point that um, the old British stories that I was looking into, um, and and when I say old, I think about going back before Britain had an England or a Scotland, uh, but way back to the pre-Roman times, so the the, the Welsh Britons and so on. Um, that Arthur was a very different character originally. He's a Welsh character originally. He's not a, an English character. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was not a king either. Um, he was more like a, He's almost like Hellboy, to be honest. Okay. Uh, he, he, can, he can travel between um, the land, you know, the waking world of just everyday life and also the other world. And he he has this role of of defending Britain against you know monsters, yeah. witches, whatever. And it's much more like it's a bit psychedelic. The stories, if you make the attempt to read them, um, it's very difficult to to read because it's it's. I mean, it's so deeply poetic, and so many of the references are from hundreds of years mm-hmm. ago, and you just don't. It's it's very psychedelic in a way. Yeah. Um, and I combine that with something else that I had been, I don't know, maybe saying researching or studying is a little pretentious, I w- but I was learning about, which is um, Japanese art, Japanese illustration from, you know, sort of the, I guess, like 17th to, or sorry, 18th to 19th centuries, mm-hmm. maybe. But, you know, the famous woodblock prints yeah. and tattoo art and stuff like that. I loved the way that, I mean, besides the way it looks, which is just graphically amazing, I loved that. Um, these prints, which were also, you know, collectible prints like we deal with today, um, the way that they told traditional Japanese stories, uh, the way that they, they, they portrayed all of these fascinating characters with backstories. And there was so much detail in the, in the textiles, the costumes and the creatures and everything. And I wanted to do something like that without copying Japanese culture, right? Mm -hmm. Because... Not that I think that that's something that a, a Western person isn't allowed to do, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to dig into my heritage as a as a British person, yeah. Um, and yeah, so I combined those two things, and that's why it, it it looks so similar to a lot of uh, 
um, Japanese artwork is because that, that was a very deliberate um, reference combination. Okay. And, um, uh, but would, would you say it's cultural appropriation if you um, like emulate the style of like, let's say Japanese artwork? Is, would you say that, right. that it's... Well, I mean, if, if we... If we nailed down a specific definition of cultural appropriation, I could say yes or no. Okay. Uh, in terms of it being something... Or would you consider it that way? To, um, well, I, again, it depends on, okay. on how you define it. If, if you define it as a, as a specifically a negative thing like stealing, mm -hmm. um, I don't think so. I mean, I wouldn't do it if I thought that were the mm -hmm. case. Um, my ears would be open to arguments to the contrary. But um, for me... Now, I, I can't entirely, like, this is a position that I take that I can't, you know, prove. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm wrong about it. But my view on this kind of thing has always been that, with music as well, that the, the technique mm -hmm. is something that you really can't stop from spreading, yeah. right? Um, the content is a different thing for yeah. me. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like uh, you know... I, one of my favorite kinds of music is reggae. And if I were to start a reggae band, um, I would not sing about Rastafari because I'm not Rastafari, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I know, you know, me playing reggae would probably bother uh, reggae <laughs> purists probably, potentially. Yeah. But, well, I mean, not all of them. Some of them are perfectly open to dudes like me playing it. True, but, but my point being basically that for me, my own view of it is that when it comes to technique and graphic style, it's it's been a conversation for centuries anyway. Yeah. Um, and I certainly would not be the first Western artist to be to have his mind blown by Japanese illustration and for that to change the way they draw. Uh, but I don't I don't feel like I'm really copying the style per se not completely in any case yeah uh, but there's definite deliberate reference to kuniyoshi specifically would be my favorite he does these amazing warrior monster prints and mm. uh yeah so maybe it is maybe it is maybe i'm doing a bad thing i don't think so but you know i don't think i'm a little agnostic on that yeah i, I don't think so either i think it's a it's it's more of a, like an interpretation i mean you can cover a song and reinterpret it without being uh, cultural inappropriate in this kind of way, you know, and uh, still have that going, I'd, I'd say. Indeed. Um, all right. Uh, the second one I want to talk about is uh, more on the um, more on the movie side here. And this this right. is a Black Dragon release for the English title Destiny, which is a German movie, though. Um, Der Müde yes. Tod. And yep. uh, yeah, how how did this happen? And you you have a long lasting relationship or long standing relationship with Black Dragon Press. Maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit as well. Sure. Um, well, yeah, Black Dragon. There, it's it's because of Black Dragon that I got into this sphere of illustration at all. They uh, James wrote me. I guess uh, I don't know when that was, like 2014 or something. He he was just starting up Black Dragon Press, and and you know I didn't even really know what he was talking about when he when he wrote me i wasn't quite sure what the industry was what the business was so i had a lot of questions for him i wanted to make sure it was on the up and up and everything was cool um and he had chosen watership down for me which was just like a a very insightful uh selection to choose me for that because i absolutely adore that book um, and that was the first one we did so yeah and i've been working with him since i love black dragon press um as for the poster itself um a while back uh i wanted to do um die nibelungen mm -hmm. because i love i just love medieval yes. anything and i had been asking around like what are what are some of the coolest medieval uh themed films and a friend of mine uh, ali marcado he recommended this movie and just like i just looked at the google results like yeah. the image results yeah, yeah. Die Fritz Lang. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to love this movie because it's all it's medieval, but it's all like completely art deco. Mm -hmm. You can see like just the visual of it is so up my alley. So, uh, yeah. And after that, uh, James thought, well, let's just do a bunch of Fritz Lang films. Yeah. Because they don't get a lot of love. You know, they're these classic they films. And they he's 
the most influential directors, uh, even on Hollywood. Yeah, ha have you have you been here at the at the museum here in Berlin? No, I haven't. I'd love to. I've only been to Berlin once or twice, and I never uh, Buddy, never come on over. Thing. I'll uh, we'll we we'll go together. It's 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 really great. I'm it's a date. I'm I'm yeah. telling you, I have they have like for example, they have like a, a they have like a standing exhibition there, which is all of those movies and they have like little yep. dioramas from the sat uh, like for, from Caligiri oh, yeah. and stuff like that and they oh, have that's great. they have me, me, they have metropolis like a whole section on metropolis which is amazing and you, you can see actually maria the prop for maria oh wow i'd love to see that yeah that'd be brilliant Absolutely. that's some cool stuff i'm, I'm telling you it's, it's really great and great to see and uh if if you have the chance if the cinema's open again that's also one of the things you know they had they had here in um at the at the babylon cinema in berlin which is like i think over 100 years old now um yeah he had he had a bunch of his premieres there didn't yeah he? i think so yeah and uh, they have actually they they always do like a like an evening like like uh, like show show a, show a certain movie over like every weekend or so for a month uh -huh. and um they did um uh, Dr. Caligiri, the cabinet of Dr. Mm -hmm. Caligiri, they did that mm -hmm. with a live organ player. One of the few ones who does that, yeah. and they played the live organ for that film. And they also had, uh, they also did this kind of live orchestra thing for um, for Metropolis, Metropolis exactly, yeah. which yeah, I heard is about amazing. That. So, I heard about that. Yeah, but yeah, so, so if if that's gonna come up and, and you have the time, you should definitely come down here. <laughs> I would love to, no doubt. Yeah, but the poster is really great. I love, I love the, the the different version, the the German version uh, with what muted colors, which goes into this uh, kind of more um, uh, uh, silent film area type of style. Yes. And then also having the the the, the English version, the Destiny with the with the red and the blue clashing. Um, why, why did you pick the Smurf color here? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, there's a couple answers to that. One is. I just love that color scheme. I, I did a sketch for an album cover like over 10 years ago mm -hmm. that never got used. And I used those colors with the blue skin tones and the red and black. And I just thought it looked so just cool, mm -hmm. like really atmospheric and a bit psychedelic and very sort of dark. And I've been looking for an excuse for a long time. But the other reason is that you, if you think of a Fritz Lang, you think, okay, it's in black and white. Mm. But for the most part, that's not really the case. He, he was really into using colored filters on black and white footage. Yeah. So you've got whole sections of that film are through a blue filter. There's whole sections of that film that are through a red filter. Um, and similarly for De Nibelungen, we used the black, uh, but also oranges and yellows because he used these sort of golden filters on a lot of the... Um, on a, through a, throughout a lot of the film. Hmm. So that's why I felt I had a little bit of license to use those colors specifically. I didn't really want to just colorize it realistically. That didn't really feel like uh, like it was appropriate to the to the look of the original film. Yeah, I think it gives a cool feeling. I, I think it's a really cool idea to do this and like the colors pop definitely. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, do you know if it's still available? Probably not, right? Still available the the poster, yeah. not not from Black Dragon. Okay. Um, I do have APs, but uh, not from Black. Dragon. Okay, there you go. You heard it here first, people. So uh, better hit the man up or check out. The, do you got a store, by the way, Peter, or is it on the store? Yep. Yeah, it's on my website. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Check it out. Check it out there, people. Um, what Peter is still available because there's a lot of great art and a lot of movies that you that might be not on your radar and are not considered that pop culture, but definitely worth checking out. Um, yeah, that's a deep cut, that one. Yeah, it is. That's a deep cut. Destiny, almost nobody has seen that film. Yeah, like, <laughs> so. yeah, especially when it comes to the American crowd, because, like, this is, you know... Um, Indeed, yes. Oh, yes. Always hard. You, yeah. you know how Parasite uh, took forever for a foreign movie to win something there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the last one uh, for this round I want to talk about is the, your thin red line print from Mondo, which is a really, really uh, great print. And um, what's the story behind this one? Well, uh, the story is um, Mondo uh, came to me about that film a few years back. Um, the Fritz Lang posters were being co-released with Mondo for a while, oh, so right. they were familiar. they were familiar with me because of that. Um, and obviously I'd been wanting to work with Mondo. Um, so I hadn't seen the film. It was interesting because I remember when it came out 
I get the feeling that there was at least one other big war movie yes, at that time. It's, Maybe it was Private yeah, Ryan it was, or something. It was, it was. In any case, I my judgment at the time and like how old I was like ninety four or something like that. So I, you know, I was like thirteen or something, yeah. and um, I I remember looking back that I kind of saw that that movie was around, and I was like, oh yeah, I know what that is. It's a war movie, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I didn't feel any pressure to see it whatsoever, and I wouldn't have really understood it at the time yeah. anyway, but. Um, then when I went to watch it, prompted by Mondo, I was like, holy cow, that's a, that's a hell of a movie. It's just, um, <laughs> you never, you never see war films handled that way. Uh, but anytime I, I watch a good war film, that's where I go. You know, I'm yeah. thinking about what happens to your soul if you're put in this circumstance like how do you handle philosophically being in hell like that mm -hmm. and that's what the whole movie is about and um so that's what i tried to get across in the print was the sort of i guess you could call it the spiritual aspect yeah, the, of that. the lost souls basically reflecting in the world yes yes and i i one of the funny things about that picture that's a well that that design that's a bit of a shame is um that's what I would call a, a slow burner uh, because there's things in that picture that you don't recognize right away. So, for example, the, you see in the reflection in the water, mm -hmm. there's, there's more reflections than there are people exactly, to cast yeah, them. Yeah. So that, that you can probably get mm -hmm. on first glance. Yeah. But there's bodies in the trees up in the green. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that almost nobody sees on the internet. You know, you're looking at it on your phone yeah. and Mondo drops are so crazy. They're so intense and people <laughs> are in such like panic mode and they get, you know, usually they'll release two posters together, mm -hmm. which don't necessarily have anything to do with each other. So people, people end up taking like two seconds to judge the poster and to look at it and they'll see it this big on their screen. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people when it came out still haven't actually seen the poster. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I haven't seen the whole thing. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a bit but, of a shame. But yeah, that. luckily it's still available for the people to digest it. Right. Yes. I mean, so, so head over to Mondo, it's still available people. And, uh, you have a piece as well in the store. I do. There yes. you go, people. It's, it's many places to get uh, get this beautiful print. European crowd should go definitely to the store, I guess. <laughs> American crowd, mm -hmm. maybe Mondo is the better address for this one. But yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, definitely wonderful, wonderful print. Um, like the details, as you said, they are. Um, it, it is a slow burn in times of looking at it. As as a as a good yeah. movie is also as well. Slow burn is always uh, something nice. I, I enjoy. And that one in particular, right? I mean, that's a that's a very long and slow. Yeah, exactly. Film for sure. Would you would you say on, on, on that note? Would you say uh, James Ryan uh, or Saving Private Ryan or uh, red a thin red line red line? Oh, definitely a thin red line. I mean, I, I thought Saving Private Ryan was was a really good film, uh, but it's just it's a whole other thing. I mean, the films that really last for me, you know, that make a a mark on me are ones where uh, there's a really strong idea yeah. to it and they really get, get into the idea and work with it. Whereas, you know, um, saving private mind, Ryan is more like spinning a really great yarn. Yeah. It's, there are ideas in it, but they don't focus on them quite to the extent that, uh, the thin red line is. Exactly. Um, okay. Since you told, uh, you told us a little something about you, I just want to hear more how mm -hmm. university, how did you start out? Did you do an apprenticeship? How did you get into all of this? Uh, well, um, I, I studied fine arts. I didn't really know at the time what illustration was. Like I had a really sort of low resolution cartoonish kind of view of what, what was possible. Mm -hmm. So had I known, I may have gone elsewhere and studied it itself. But um, so I came out with an interdisciplinary fine arts bachelor, <clears throat> which is one of the most practically speaking, useless degrees you can have. <laughs> uh, but in terms of what I learned at school and the people I met, it was, you know, I'm not disparaging having gone to art school. It was great. But Which art um, school was it? 
That was uh, NASCAD, which is the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Okay, but uh, is that, uh, I talked to a couple of Canadian artists before, like Phantom City Creative. You, you, this is where they yeah. all went to, or is it the, this kind of art school? Or is there more no. bigger ones? No, no, it's, it's okay, there, there aren't that many um, big reputable art schools in Canada. It's Canada's, I mean, that's just Canadian style, you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, it's not really major. I don't know of any. So James White, Signal Noise, mm -hmm. may have gone there because he, I don't know if he's from Halifax, but he lived there at least. Okay. If he's not, I don't, I, I assume he's not there anymore, yeah. but, um, that's possible, but I can't think of anybody else. Who okay. Okay. There. Okay. So, uh, so no school friends uh, from that time from, from the, from the same area of work. <laughs> Well, yeah, but they're doing other stuff. Oh, okay. doing other yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I just talking, yeah, talking to Phantom City Creative or some, some, some people mm -hmm. like that from the, from the scene. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, uh, what was your first try when, when it came to like, like, or what was your artwork in the beginning? What, what did you do with that degree? Well, um, when I came out, uh, what I was trying to do is, is work in uh, as an illustrator in music. Mm -hmm. Because my other thing at the time, like my first love is, is drawing, but the second is, is music. And I was really serious about music for, for a long like, time, playing in a lot okay, of bands. I just wanted to ask if you're uh, making it or if you are uh, like a connoisseur, like a behind the scene. No, no, no. I, I, I was making music and uh, generally geeking out about music. And I sort of dabbled in audio recording and stuff like that. Um, so is it reggae? Did you make reggae or since? Um, sort of. We, we did some stuff that was like not reggae really, but was sort of like reggae fused with other things. Um, I played hardcore punk rock and instrumental prog rock and a bunch of other kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> what was did, like, what was your part? Did you, what instrument do you play or are you? Were... Um, well, mostly, mostly guitar, but I'm actually a better bass player. Eventually, sort of later in the process, I picked up the bass. Okay. But um, no vocals, or did you do vocals as well? Not really. In in the meantime, in in over the last ten years or so, I've I've been sort of writing my own songs and whatever. But that's like a bedroom thing. Now, okay. You know? I don't. Okay. Uh, it's it's just a hobby. At the this the point. Peter Diamond album. When when is it dropping? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Maybe I'll let you know. With, happens, with Mondo, I, I you, you design the cover and they do they put out the the, 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 the soundtrack, the Peter Diamond soundtrack. Yeah, I don't know if that would be a hot drop. No, I'm not so sure. <laughs> it's Mondo. They do they sell. <laughs> it's Mondo. Um, so yeah, I was trying. My my vision at the time was uh, sort of like um, Pusshead. You ever heard of Pusshead? No. So uh, there's a there's a lot of artists today that are um, sort of carrying the torch that Pusshead lit. He did he did uh, he did the skulls like uh, Misfits, uh, okay. Metallica. Okay. There's this very distinctive way of drawing skulls with the stippling, and he kind of initiated that whole sort of thing. But he was he was an illustrator and uh, ran a record label and played in bands, and that was sort of what I wanted ah, to try. Okay, to do. I see. Um, it didn't work <laughs> at all. But I started doing um, gig posters because in high school I had promoted punk shows um, with my friend in high school, and I did the I drew the posters and set up the PA system and he did everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a background in posters like that. That was how I started doing so illustration. I didn't yeah. think of it as that's how a lot, how lot of artists uh, came to it. Like, like for example, Oliver Barrett got the, got this way and uh, so, right. Matt, Matt Ryan Tobin, I think is uh, as well. Uh, okay. And, yeah. And, well, I mean this, this scene, you know, the, yeah. the alternative movie posters is basically an outgrowth of gig poster culture. But what happened with me is, in school and, and the first years out of school, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to do this poster thing. I've been doing them since high school. I'll just like make a business out of it because that's so easy, right? Um, but then a friend of mine in, in, from school started this. He did it right. Like he actually did a good job of it. Um, <laughs> he, he was a screen printer. He teamed up with a friend of his. They worked with all the local bands. And like before I blinked, he was already doing it. And I realized I was being kind of half-assed about it. So... 
but I still tried to pursue album covers and I, I did that the best I could, but eventually I realized I had to, I had to, I had to change gears. So I started doing editorial work and like advertising work, which is more your mainstream freelance illustration stuff. And then, yeah, James approached me at some point and I started dipping my toes in the poster water and have been doing it more and more and more since. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great, it's a great place to be. I yeah. Know. I mean, it's great to have you on the show <laughs> that, that made it happen. And, um, yeah, I, I heard the other day, I, I, I didn't know that, but that also the foil variants, like the foil stuff we get comes from the, mm -hmm. from the gig world. Because that's how they promoted the, the two poster, which was interesting. I didn't know that, but it was really interesting to, to hear about that. Yeah, I'd actually kind of like now, one of the things I want to do um, going forward is to kind of go back a little bit mm -hmm. and get back into gig posters again. Because it, it, the way that I did gig posters back in the day was, I mean, these were Xerox, yeah. right? I was just doing pen drawings and like printing out lettering from you know, Microsoft yeah. Word and gluing it on and photocopying it. Um, and in between, like I, I sort of, I dropped out of that scene and have come back around to the ANPs, but I'd like to, I'd like to start doing gig posters again. So that's, that's something I'll be looking yeah, into. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good. I mean, there's, there's a lot of gigs in, on, on the European market. So um, definitely something that, I mean, when Corona is over and COVID is passing, yeah, right. obviously, but um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of the European tours are very important to the people and, uh, and all different kinds of music. So maybe there's something in the future. W yeah, would you consider see. any kind of uh, band or would you just want to stick to uh, your genre? Well, well, um, I'd be pretty open. Um, it's got to make sense for the kind of stuff I'd want to draw. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not really a generalist stylistically. Like I like to stick to what I do well. So if it's a good fit with that, I mean, if I really hated the music, probably not, okay. but I'm pretty open-minded. Okay. So. Well, what kind of music don't you like? I don't actually, I don't actually think there's a kind of music that I entirely don't oh, like. Well, there is for um, me. There is definitely. <laughs> if, if it doesn't have a rhythm section, uh, I probably am not very excited. How, about how, it. how are your thoughts about uh, German folk music? German folk like, music, like uh, like Schlager, you mean like Schlager. Like, oh, Schlager! Oh, uh, yeah, not a big fan. There uh, you go. Would you do a, a do a poster for Florian Silbereisen or something like that? I don't know. Probably. Well, yeah, who knows? Uh, I was right, going to say they probably pay well. They probably pay well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah um <laughs> coming back to your actual posters um you, you yeah. already mentioned your first try or in in the movie poster world was uh, watership down which isn't even a movie poster i mean the first three that i did were for books yeah. not movies um, so um yeah looking looking back at this would you do something different here i mean looking at us right now it, is it, it it is a different kind of concept uh on the idea but i i, I totally get get the concept here but looking at it from from a like a um like a, the the what's it called the 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 whole design the the, the idea yep. uh, design idea uh -huh. and um it looks really finished it doesn't look like a first time job you know but w would you change something or um, well, I think the important thing to remember is that is it is in no way a first time. Like, yeah. I mean, I'd been an illustrator for ages already at that point. Um, in terms of the screen printing, I mean, we got away with it thanks to um, thanks to John Smith, um, who is this amazing separations guy. He, you know, <laughs> he led me by the hand like a child through the separations, okay. um, and DL printed it just like exquisitely yeah. um in terms of the design yeah i mean there's the little border around the bottom it's like sort of an inset yeah, yeah, border yeah. i'd probably just taken a little more time with that and sharpened it up okay but no i really like i really like how the concept came out and it's a poster that i get requests for all the time and i, I know people really like it so i probably wouldn't really mess with it all too right much. perfect um, okay, speaking of music, uh, uh, movies, music, movies, all the, all that stuff. <laughs> what was the last movie you have seen? Uh, the Dig. The Dig. Uh, yeah, that's the Netflix one, right? Yeah. Uh, how how did you like it? I was I was kind of entertained by it. It was uh, was a. I 
I Sunday loved. afternoon, nothing to do. It was a good movie. Perfect. Yeah. I was. I I I, I loved it. I, it was actually the second time that I watched it. Um, I I, re, I re rewatched it again with my mm-hmm. wife. Um, I loved it. Like if. You know, I, I saw that there was a movie uh, about the Sutton Who dig, and I thought, oh, this is perfect. Like, it's, like, designed for me. I mean, if, if the Anglo-Saxons had actually come to life and risen from the grave, that's probably the only <laughs> way I would have liked it better. Yeah. Um, but, no, I, I'm super into that. Um, and it's it's something I never would have expected anybody to make a movie about. You know, I, I can only imagine with how risk-averse... Yeah, right. Uh, the film industry can be and has every right to be at the moment. Yeah, I'm just I'm just shocked that they were like, yeah, that'll sell. Yeah, you know? and I think, um, but it's it's yeah. great. It's so I, good. I really had a good time. I was like I was feeling along yeah. with the dig, and then when when they were about to take it away, and then all the drama with the World War looming, yeah. that was crazy stuff. Yeah, and they did. There was some some really poetic stuff that they did in there. So there there's one scene where. Uh, now, I mean, it's based on a yeah. true story and some of it they obviously made up. Like, for example, um, a young pilot mm-hmm. who's, you know, learning to fly, he, he buzzes, he flies over the dig site and he crashes yeah. in the river. Yeah, yeah. And somebody goes and, and dives and gets him. And, and this is this amazing uh, juxtaposition because you've got this scene underwater diving down to rescue this warrior from his ship, mm-hmm. right? Which is exactly what the dig is about. Yeah. It's, you know, the anglo-saxon king and his boat burial or whatever and all throughout the movie they do these little parallels you know like finds he gets buried and then they have to dig him out that was a crazy scene i was like oh snap that's crazy right that must feel crazy yeah it's great yeah and then even you know when it shows them sleeping in their beds it's got them from from above Mm -hmm. and they're curled up in the fetal position that you will often find uh archaeological sites will find people yeah. buried in that position and it's just like it's it they take a lot of time to to really dig down into that idea and they make a lot out of it i think it's really well yeah, yeah but by saying all that it all makes sense i, I remember all of that but uh like looking at it from that perspective that is uh really interesting so i guess i have to re-watch it on a sunday afternoon again <laughs> It's it's worth re-watching for sure there'll, there'll be a lot of stuff that you notice that you didn't notice the first time perfect um how do you like the, the, the key art that I, I put the key art up? How, how do you like it? Are you a fan of it? Would uh, you? It's, it's fine. It's fine. Like it's, yeah, you know, it's atmospheric. Um, what, what would you do? <laughs> I've thought about that and I'm really not sure. Um, I mean that when you ask that question, it, it, it points to like the kind of the center of the whole alternative movie poster, uh, process which is are you making a poster to advertise a film or are you making a poster to respond to a film Mm -hmm. because if you're doing advertising like the way that i handle movie posters would not be good advertising for the film in most cases Mm -hmm. uh but it, it but it's a response to the film so i would probably want to do want to get into something, one of those interesting images they use, like for example, when they bring Fines up out from the dirt after he's been buried in that mini landslide, because it, it talks, it, 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 like that's more what the movie is about, right? It's kind of about death and, you know, um, bringing things up from out of the ground and all this kind of stuff. And in the key art, there's none of that, right? Um, but I understand that I, I can, I can see why they wouldn't do that why they wouldn't do that for a key art for a film. Mm. But it's very, like, it's very atmospheric. It captures the mood of the thing. It gives you that sense of, like, idyllic English countryside. And, yeah, you know, it works. I, I don't find it particularly compelling, but it works. Yeah. It does the job. It definitely does. Um, and what would you say is a must-see movie that will come out soon? Uh, the Green Knight from A24. I cannot wait to see that film. I'm so excited for I, it. I mean, you made artwork basically for it. <laughs> well, I mean, I made artwork for, um, you know, the, the, the original story. And this is going to be very different from the original story, I'm I, sure. Yeah, I'm sure, um, too. It got an R. It's, it's R-rated. It looks, 
looks weird enough. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's going to be dark. It's going to be weird as it should the be. Graphic. And I'm really excited about Dev Patel as Gawain. I think yeah, that's me too. such a cool casting choice. I'm really excited yeah. for that. Sadly that it didn't come out last year, but uh, there's a date for summer, right? This is summer? I have yet to hear a date for it. Um, if there is one, that would make my day. I, I think I heard July, I'm but I'm not sure. Well, that would be great. I, I will look that up. Yeah. But, but, or um, maybe, yeah. maybe so, not Europe, uh, Europe again. That could be also a thing. Right. That's always an issue, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. And the poster, too, is really yeah. cool. Like that's that's really nice key art. I, I love that. Yeah. I mean, A twenty four. They always do a good job when it comes to the posters. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's yeah. definitely better than the rest. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, would you want to do if if you see the movie, you want to do some some uh, poster for that? I think it's pretty unlikely that I would not want to do that. Okay. Yeah, I. I have high hopes for the film, um, and it just—I love the Green Knight. So, so a twenty-four. Yeah. You heard it here first. Make it happen. Licensing. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. All for it. <laughs> um, and what would you say is your uh, favorite movie? Or, or I'm sorry. Or do you have any, any others that you really want to see? Um, well, I was—I've been looking forward to Wolfwalkers for the last couple of oh, years. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and that's I finally amazing. saw that a couple of times and loved it. Um, as far as must sees. No, I'm looking forward to the Foundation uh, series from Amazon. I just re-listened to the uh, to the books, and those were uh, those kind of blew my mind when I was a teenager. So I'm looking forward to that. I don't know if it's a like it's a must see in the sense that there's no way I'm not going to watch it, but I don't specifically have high hopes for it. I think they could just as easily drop. It's the okay. Ball. It's uh, solely for you. If you if it's a must see for yeah. you, it's a must see for you. I don't want to hear. I don't want yep. to hear Dune and stuff like that all the time. So it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dune's cool too, for sure. But uh, yeah. but yeah, um, and what would you say is your favorite movie? Then do you do you can you can you say that? Oh, man, I really don't know. I one of the things that's happened since I started working uh, with AMPs is that my relationship to movies has changed a little bit. I was always a very passive consumer of films like i would just kind of watch them i wouldn't really judge them there'd be the occasional film that just would break through that and was there was something about it that was obviously so interesting that i would really mm -hmm. notice but I've, I've now started thinking about it a lot more because i realized like i need to know what my favorite film is you know all these other poster artists are like you know they know movies and you know they can answer that question and i realized that i can't so <laughs> I'm not sure, but I did send you because you, you know did. you asked you for did. key art as well. I sent you a couple options. Um, so which one were we talking about one of first? Them, <laughs> well, let's talk about Christine. Christine, there we go. Yeah, Christine, I love that movie. Uh, this is one of those films that I I think I needed somebody to give me a door into mm -hmm. it. A friend of mine from back home, uh, who's watched a lot more films than I have, um, he recommended it to me, and. Um, you know, told me a few things he likes about it. And I just rewatched it recently. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, I said that I love it when a movie burrows into an idea, mm -hmm. you know, where it's not just like a bunch of shit that happens to a character, but it's got a concept. And Christine really has that, you know, it's really about this, this obsession, like not just, it's sort of a material <laughs> obsession because you know how people yeah. can get about yeah. cars, but it's also you know, how somebody changes when they're in a toxic relationship. Um, and it just really burrows into that idea. And uh, it's so beautifully directed. And there's some amazing practical effects, mm -hmm. like where they have uh, the car gets smashed yeah. by goons. I remember. And then it, it, it rebuilds itself, you know. Um, and yeah, that's a that's a fantastic film. And the music in it is great because it's all, you know, 50s mm -hmm. rock and roll. How do you like the poster then, the, the key art for it? It's it's good. Um, it does the job. Again, it's one of those things. And the car is just so badass that it doesn't need to do a lot more than that. I actually, a while back after I watched it again, I was I was trying to sketch up some ideas for a mm. for an AMP for it. And are yeah, I, I hit a wall. I'm, I'm going to come back to it yeah. at some point. But are, are there are there any uh, AMPs out there for yeah. Christine? There are. There's. I think there's like three or four. Yeah maybe only two or three that have been really like proper gallery releases yeah. and they're good. They're fine. Like they're, they're well done. They're stylish, but it's hard to get into the meat of that story. Um, sure. 
I haven't, I haven't figured it out yet. Okay. I'm going to probably keep okay. yeah. trying. Sure. And uh, you, you offered me something else. Uh, you, you want to talk about that as well? Yes. Uh, the Shadow of the Vampire, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I have that. But also, you gave me also uh, uh, I Kill Giants. So if you want to talk about that as well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, I love we, that. We're going to talk about that in a second. Sh- Shadow of the Vampire, John Malkovich and Roland Yeah, Defoe. yeah, right. So um, an oldie but goldie. Dracula is one of my favorite literary characters possibly my favorite i mean well arthur probably is but um right up there is is dracula i just love the character i love the idea of somebody who who survives through all these generations and goes from being this you know all-powerful guy to being just like Quick this question who's who's your fa- who's your favorite dracula <sighs> my favorite dracula. bela christopher um <laughs> Well, I don't know if, like, I don't want this to be confused for saying that I think he's the best one, but uh, my favorite yeah, one favorite. is Gary. Yeah, Gary. Gary Oldman. Okay, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman, because in, in the Coppola's Dracula, the way he plays the scene, um, I, I mean, I can't remember what the question is that triggers him, but it's where he talks about his family. Yeah, yeah I remember, I remember. It's, gets so angry and he pulls out the sword and it's like yeah it's a choice uh but shadow of the vampire the idea is it's a sort it's almost like a mockumentary about the f- the filming of nosferatu it's what we do in the shadows and <laughs> yeah except that the the actor you know the guy who played um count orlock what was his name count orlock in Nos- in nosferatu i can't uh, remember yeah, i think but so hmm. guy Max Schreck, who played the vampire mm-hmm. in Nosferatu, yeah. um, the idea is in this film that he was really, he genuinely was a vampire and that Max Schreck was his alter yeah, yeah, ego. Yeah. And um, that only the director knew that he was really a vampire and he had he spends the whole time trying to keep him from eating the people on set. <laughs> and there's this amazing scene where the other actors are trying to get him to break character and he just won't. Yeah. And, but they're like teasing him and they're, they're like, Oh, you know, tell us your story, uh, count Orlock. And he's telling them the story and a bat flies past and he grabs it out of the air and bites off its head and drinks his blood. <laughs> and they're just like, Mike, this, this is like the most amazing method actor we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's a genuinely intelligent and well-written film. And it's also ridiculous, you know, and funny. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yeah, got uh, John Malkovich and Willem Dafoe in it. Come on, can't can't be that bad. No, no, no. It's definitely not bad. It's very, it's very weird and kind of corny. And I feel embarrassed to say that it's one of my favorite movies. But no is. need to be embarrassed. And uh, yeah, last last but not least, uh, I Kill Giants, huh? Yes. Um, so that one took me by surprise. I don't remember why I watched that one. Um, and like through most of it, I was like, yeah, this is kind of a neat story. Uh, but then by the end, I mean, I won't spoil it or whatever, mm. but uh, by the end, I mean, I was in tears, yeah. to be honest with you. It, Great uh, movie. The way they handled that idea and yeah, it, it changes everything else about the movie. Like, you know, you're questioning the whole time. Are these giants real? Like, obviously they're not, but they kind of seem like they are. And then you, you understand mm. at the end what she's really dealing with. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great re- reveal at the end. I think that was like yeah. made very uh, intelligently. And yeah, but I didn't ask for a shadow of the empire, but like, like what would what would your uh, movie poster look like? For Shadow of the Vampire, that's a good question. I'm I'm really not sure. That's that's one where I don't have anything in in my head. I'd have to play with it. The one you know, the one that they have there is like it's whatever. It's just a bunch of heads. Yeah. You know, it's not really yeah. doing much. Yeah, it does not. But yeah, uh, okay. Let's leave it at that. Maybe it should be just a bat, like without a head, with, without a head, you know? It'd be, tempted, it'd be tempting to just draw Willem Dafoe sucking the blood out yeah. of a decapitated like bat. A, like it's an ice cream fun. cone. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, and I kill giants? Um, yeah, that one doesn't touch the idea at all. Um, which, one are, which one are you putting up there? Is it basically I, just... I showed both of them. Okay, yeah, because um, I think there's one. Yeah, the the one where she's in the yeah, woods. Yeah, I think that is a little 
bit more leading towards the idea what the movie's about. But like looking at the other one, it's more like what is this kind of fantasy movie? Yeah, and they've got like a. Uh, I think in that one they have the the little blurb at the top that says it's like from yeah, the yeah, producers yeah. of exactly, Harry Potter exactly. or something like that to kind of draw you in, mm-hmm. but that's so not what it's about. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit misleading. Yeah. yeah, but I mean that's a tough one though because you really have to get into the concept and you know mm-hmm. key art doesn't usually do that so yeah. Yeah, indeed indeed but yeah that's i mean some great choices choices i've never heard on here before so that's that's a good thing and uh yeah <laughs> and, and i know it's always hard to to pick a favorite movie like, come on there's yeah, there's so many so, good ones it's like picking picking yeah. your favorite child or picking your favorite song it's like yeah it right. always all depends on mood and stuff like that but if, if some if people ask me i always go with empire strikes back because it's i'm a big star wars fan that's my that's go-to great. movie yeah so. i love star wars. no I, lo- I i absolutely adore star wars and you know there's a lot of films um you know big famous classic films that i really really like but um if i'm thinking about my favorites it's usually one you know films that surprise mm-hmm. me and and those films generally don't surprise me they impress me and i love them but it's a different I, I have to say the 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 last the last movie I watched was uh, Raya and uh, the Last Dragon. Oh yeah, I'd which like was to see really that, good. Yeah. I really enjoyed. it. I had such a good time with that movie, and uh, my the my my I would I, th- I would consider it favorite, but um, of the year definitely. And but my favorite movie of the year so far is still Nomadland. Nomadland was so amazing, such a wonderful movie. It was incredible. Definitely de- deserved. I'll consider that a recommendation. Yeah, definitely deserved all the all the um, nominations and wins they got. <clears throat> okay, um, since we talked about some cool ass posters, I'm gonna wanna hear some more posters of you. What, what are your three favorite posters as of right now? Could be key art, could be uh, AMP, whatever you like. Like by, by other artists, you can you can say yours if you want to, but. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's rarely ever going to be the case. Um, yeah, I think I think the ones that I that I earmarked um, for that are on the one hand, uh, Nico just did a. I can't remember what what he titled it, but he did a Zelda yeah. Zelda print. Um, and I always like I love everything he does, mm-hmm. uh, but seeing him do color is always nice because he doesn't do that very often. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's, it's beautiful with the way that he's done it. Um, and I love that it's, you know, it's not particularly branded, you know, it's more of just like an art print. Um, and yeah, his, his work is always delightful. And then, uh, there's also that Killian Ang Lord of the Rings. Okay. Okay. I got to stop you there for a second here. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen the last couple of release episodes because Uh I'm not that impressed with the Lord of the Rings piece, I have to say. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It didn't didn't click with me as well. I mean, it's it's a beautiful piece. I, I I'm not gonna say that, but I think it was in the last year, people were like, "Hey, where's the Lord of the Rings Ang piece in your tournament? This is the best poster of the year. It should be up there." Blah blah blah, and, right. and stuff like that. Right. For for me, it just isn't. I I don't get it. Maybe right. you can explain it a little more to me. <laughs> okay. Well. Um... Obviously, art is subjective. Yeah. So if, if you say that you're not into it, I'm not particularly surprised. Uh, if you say you're not impressed by it, um, I feel like maybe that's something that you need to defend rather than uh, me explain. Because that's, I mean, that's just, uh, just look at the detail. And, and the, the, the craftsmanship in it is, should be enough to at least make you yeah. go, you know, tip your hat. Um, it does t- techni- technically I'm, I'm not talking about technically because this technique right. is very similar in all those pieces uh, which is always impressive yeah. in, in every kind of piece but i think yeah. the concept and everything that i think that just didn't like you know right. d- didn't get me right i i can I, I can i can sort of i can sort of understand where you might be coming with that um the thing is uh i mean i don't like to speak for another for artist sure. but when i look at his work i I think he's got a similar thing going on to what Nico does, which is that he he puts things into into a setting. He has a big macro lens. Well, that well, a macro lens actually goes. Yes. That's the wrong lens to go. But he, he <laughs> has a sort of a macro view on things. Yeah. He does big. He doesn't really zoom in on characters, and like you know, his 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 human characters are probably 
Well, I was going to say they're probably the least interesting part of his work, except that he does a great job of doing tiny little people and still having them be interesting, which is impressive. But um, so so that's what he's done with this. Mm-hmm. You know, he's put it through his filter and he's letting the landscape talk. And the 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 degree to which he loses himself in the landscape is always uh, a joy for me. But the reason why I would put that so high in my own estimation is that he's managed to make something like completely take possession of it for himself and make it an ang thing, okay. which okay. is what so many of us are trying to do. But it also is incredibly appropriate to the property. Okay. And that's not always the case, okay. right? Like some you. properties, if he anged it, it might not really suit. Uh, but in this case, it does. <laughs> and it, it, it pulls it back to uh, the way that I see Lord of the Rings. So for me, if I'm thinking about Lord of the Rings, my vision of it is not dominated by Peter Jackson's vision of it. Mm-hmm. I see it much more through a bit of a medieval kind of lens. It's much more graphic um, old fashioned, uh, and, and he, and he really gets that. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's one of the, one of several of the many reasons why I think it's, it's such a strong piece. Mm, okay. Okay. And I, I see, I see you. I totally see your points. I, I, I don't know. It just, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Like, and you know, there's loads of posters that people love where it just doesn't do it yeah, for me. You I, know, that's I obviously. Totally get yeah. it. I, I, I'm just like, so, I don't know if I'm like, since, since I'm, I'm the guy who is like talking about releases and presenting all of that. And just like this, it's for, right. for you want to understand where everybody's yeah, exactly. coming from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for me, yeah. it just feels overhyped, but it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take this. Like maybe it is, maybe it is overhyped. Yeah. I mean, the, the amount of hype that is possible in this space mm. is, uh, is pretty yeah. intense. So I'm not saying it isn't overhyped, but uh, it is. I think it's a brilliant piece yeah, of work. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, but I have to say, for example, I liked his Galactus uh, piece he did with Mondo. Galactus I is great. I like that more. That's fair. No, that's fair. Uh, if I were, if I had to choose one of those two, I'm not quite sure which one I would have gone with. I, I love that Galactus. I think. As well. Yeah. Uh, also, Galactus is. I think Lord of the Rings has been done more often. Especially, especially well, sure. this year, yeah, yeah, and Galactus yeah, Fantasy yeah. Four not uh, Fantastic Four not that much, so I guess I'm full with that. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Okay, and the last one. Uh, that one was the Seven Seal by. Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm still waiting for mine in the mail. Um, <laughs> oh, you got that one, great. That's yeah, Ruas, Ruas is yeah. He's one of my he's one of my favorite artists. It's also sure. Black Dragon Press, right? Uh-huh. He does a lot of stuff for Black Dragon, and that releases Black Dragon. Yeah, um, yeah, he's one of those guys where it's it's pretty consistently brilliant what he what he puts out, um, and I'm not sure if he's as popular as he should be. Uh, yeah. I don't know how. Maybe he's more popular than I realize. Like I don't. I'm still relatively new to the scene. In the but, scene, he's not that. Like I, I think I would say he's not that known. Yeah, he should be. He should be. Yeah. He should be. Um, and yeah, that's you know, I like I said, I, I love medieval stuff, and obviously that comes through in my choices, right? Um, and I haven't seen the film yet, uh, and I have to, but yeah, it's just it, technically the, he's a master craftsman, you know. The the, the the painting is just beautiful, and I'm, I'm not really sure what else I can say about it other than that it's just it's just gorgeous. Mm, okay. You know? um, yes. It's- Speaking of galleries, because we just mentioned Black Dragon Pass, we, we, we mentioned Mondo. Um, yeah, I know you have something coming up at Vice Press, and you did yep. stuff with Bottleneck. So you've been around the galleries, yep. you, you, uh, mm-hmm. like like the the jack of all all galleries, basically. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, what is your opinion on, on on galleries itself and the scene itself uh, compared to maybe, for example, the NFT stuff that's going on? Right. Um, well. I don't have a lot of, uh, I mean, I suppose I could come up with things to say about NFT, but I, I'm only just learning about it now. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of still hung up on the environmental aspect of it. I, I mm-hmm. can't really get much further into it until, until that changes. But, um, but it's also, it's very interesting. I don't have a lot of the, the, the hangups that a lot of people do about it being somehow artistically illegitimate or whatever. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not worried about that. I think it's very interesting. 
Um, the galleries, yeah, they've all been great to work with. Um, I, I, you know, I would kind of like to work with everybody a little bit. Mm. Um, I'm certainly like, I'm not, I'm, I guess I'm non-monogamous in that <laughs> what, sense. Like, what, what is still on your, on your bucket list of galleries that you need to work with? Well, I mean, all the other ones, really. <laughs> you know, I've worked with uh, Mondo. I'm just doing something with Vice Press now. Um, I've worked with Black Dragon Press and Bottleneck. And um, I just did something. I mean, they're not a gallery technically, but I uh, just did something directly with Cartoon Saloon, which is coming out soon. Um, but yeah, you know, the whole list minus those ones is the ones I'd like to work with. Uh, okay. As for whether I keep working with them, you know, you just you see how things go. Yeah. But Right. Um, and uh, do you collect as well? Like, is there stuff you... A tiny little bit. I don't think you could really call it collecting. I do indulge myself uh, now and then, but very, very rarely. I mean, the record collection behind you looks pretty good. <laughs> yes. I, records, I used to have 10 times that much before I before I yeah. moved. Um, and, you know, I, I buy a lot of art books and stuff like that. But um, posters, I just buy the select few, and it's mostly been Black Dragon stuff up till now. Okay. Um, and what's in your collection? What, what can you like, or, well, uh, in the background there, I, I don't know if you'll still see my head if I, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll put you up all by yourself so we can see you. And sure. Everybody. There's, um, Jonathan Burton back mm -hmm. there. Um, Die Zauberflöte. And Zauberflöte. I, I just, I love that. I had to have that. Um, and that whole thing, like that whole opera print series from Evil Tender is just so cool. Yeah, we didn't mention that on the galleries list, but that's mm. another one. Um, and I have a the smaller art print version of the Seventh Seal from Ruas that's coming mm. in. Um, I also bought uh, one of the the playing card series. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I, I sadly cannot pronounce the artist's yeah. name. I would just make a total mess of it. It is. I think it's uh, uh, Farhat, Farhat uh, Kiai. I don't know if that's the correct name, but uh, I, I I could not confirm or deny. Because but I, I I love this my, my, yeah, my love girlfriend it. is Persian and uh, 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 like she's uh -huh. from Iran and uh, yeah, so right. he's a, he's an Iranian artist. So yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic series. I got one, uh, the one with the queen. Yeah. I, uh, nursing yeah, the Joker. I pulled it up. I pulled it up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, and what else do I have? I have a Kinsella. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, God, what's the name of that one again? It's a Tarkovsky film with the dude in the woods. I didn't have any relationship to the film, okay. but I love <laughs> the, the artwork. Yeah. I love I'm a big fan of, of Edward Kinsella. Yeah. Uh, what else do I have? I also got Matt Griffin's Dune, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Paul yeah. piece, yeah. the art version. I love that one. Despite it being 24 by 36, I'm very hesitant to buy Prince. Why is that? Why is that? The wall space? Uh, it's just it's just huge. Um, it's you, you that's like me. almost exactly the size of my of my flat file. So it's just inconvenient. Oh, okay. I get why people prefer it. I totally get that. It much more feels like a film poster. I, I get it, but uh, it's just kind of impractical. I find. Yeah. I, I, if you're going to be gathering them together yeah you know? or, or if you, you just need a bigger flat file then i mean <laughs> so that's yeah and you know my priority with my flat files is basically you know my own yeah. art and my own ap's so do i you, try not to do you work, it does that mean do you work more uh in 18 by 24 then because of that um yeah when when i first started with black dragon we we were just doing 18 by 24s and mm -hmm. 18 by 36 as well um and that's a super convenient size um, my first 24 by 36 piece that I did was a private commission and I worked, I did the original at 18 by 24. Yeah. Well, I mean, different proportions, but at that sheet size and then blew it up. Um, and that, that has some, there's some drawbacks to working that way. So I'm still, I'm still working on the best way to do it. But at, at the moment, that's what I do. All right. Uh, and the last ones you talked about, those are the ones you, you the, the, the latest ones you put up. Sorry, I didn't um, understand. Is, I'm sorry. It, it, are, are the ones that we just talked about, the Jonathan Burton one and uh, Farhad oh. Kiazi one, right. are this the, the latest yes. ones you put up, right? Yes. Uh, the Burton is in the background yeah. in my studio and the other one is at home. Yeah. Uh, I bought that. I, I sort of I, I bought that for my wife I, and uh, had it really nicely framed for Christmas, and we've got that. Yeah, home, I just so. I just wondered what uh, how much how much of your art do you bring home? Um, Since you are in the studio right now, for the people to know, it's the studio. Right, right, yeah, uh, 
there's there, there's a bit. Um, there's some of my originals. Um, I'll give to my wife as presents. Like I've done portrait of her and portraits of the kids and stuff. And we've got that kind of stuff up. We've got one of my wind in the willows, mm -hmm. uh, up above our couch. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I gifted a foil variant of the, uh, Leonardo versus shredder okay. print to my eight year old. And he flipped his wig because he, he didn't, he didn't see the foil thing mm -hmm. coming and he also didn't realize how big it was mm -hmm. going to be. But I brought it home, framed, and it's got the holographic foil stuff. Sweet. And yeah, he Sweet. flipped out. How, how, how's that, by the way? How, how often do you, or, or do you do uh, original artwork for your kids? Is that something you do? Um, I not really. Like, I'll do things like uh, if they have a birthday party, I'll do like a little cartoon on a card for them. Okay. For example, I gave my son, my firstborn son, um, a painting as a like, congratulations on being born gift, okay. you know, that he, I, I don't think he quite grasps that it's his, it doesn't make a big impression, but I want that to be something he has. Mm -hmm. And I have to do that for my second uh, son still. I haven't done that is, yet. But. Is, 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 for example, let, let's say um, your son is going to come to you or one, one of mm -hmm. your kids is going to come to you and says, Hey dad, I really want a baby Yoda piece. Can you, can you do that? Is it, would that happen? <laughs> uh, well, would it happen? Probably not, uh, because I have Diamond Crush of Dreams. <laughs> just because it's it's such. A, I mean, I do. Uh, one of the things we do is I'll I'll draw something digitally for them to color yeah, in. Okay, they love to okay, do that. Okay, interesting. But no gifts of that nature. Um, I just don't have a lot of extra time for drawing. Okay. You know, I'm trying to meet deadlines, so that doesn't happen a lot. But you know, the Ninja Turtles one. Um, when that got approved mm -hmm. through bottleneck, you know, I told him and he was really excited. Is, is he a Ninja like, Turtle fan? Of? I want, yeah, he loves him. Yeah. He okay. loves him. Um, and he, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do like a Mandalorian print and give him a copy for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I got a couple sketches that see if something comes out of that. But, um, okay. yeah. And you know, my, my wife would love me to do a Harry Potter. Poster. She's a big Harry Potter head. Yeah, she is. She loves it. And I mean, I do too. Uh, so, Maybe that'll happen. I think, oh, oh my God. I would love to see the Prisoner of Azkaban in your Watership Down style. Oh, yeah, that could be cool. That's not a bad idea. There you go. Not a bad idea. I'll, I'll, I'll just take a print. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I mean, that's uh, yeah, that, that would be some some cool stuff. I think that I can see that. And, um, yeah, that, that sounds really good. Is, uh, by the way, what, what is your wife doing? Is she also in the design world or is she doing something no. differently? No, she's a scientist. She's a scientist. She's there you go. That's cool. Um, does she inspire you in terms of yes. artwork with like with her science side of it? Um, I I wouldn't say that the science part of it inspires my work. Okay. No, um, science is, is kind of it's a big part of my upbringing. My my dad is a biologist. Okay. Uh, it's a big part of the way that I look at the world and so on, but. It's, there's a little bit that goes in the other direction. Like there is a, a certain creative aspect to, to research, um, managing ideas, trying to focus ideas, um, assessing ideas and solutions to problems. Mm -hmm. And she, she got into her, her work later than, you know, her, her professional work started yeah. later than mine did. And, Sometimes I'm able to bring problem solving tips from illustration into her field. And, you know, we often talk about what she's working on and, and try to solve things. Okay. And she has a good eye. So very often, well, it's always profitable if I'm working on something and she's around to, to ask her mm. opinion. But, okay. but no, the science isn't a big part of what inspires the work. Okay. No. Um, your office. I mean, you just redesigned it. You you posted it on on Instagram lately and on all the socials. Yeah. Uh, and w yeah. you gave us some pictures that f to, for bigger uh, uh, yes. viewing pleasure. And uh, yeah, walk us through your office. What 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 uh, what did you decide to change or like what was it before? And well, uh, I moved. I moved into a new space. Is is what happened. Um, I had. I had a sort of almost like a storefront space in a way. Uh, I didn't have big shop windows or anything, but it was a little street level thing um, up until very recently. And what's happened is that an old school building in 
in the fifth district of Vienna has been repurposed for studios. Mm, okay. And it's a sort of like a pilot project, a uh, submission note something where, you know, they're, they're trying to find something to do with these buildings when, when the city's not sure what, what to do with it. And, you know, fill it with artists is the easiest thing. Cause we don't really, okay. <laughs> we're, we're sort of not picky about our space. Um, what was it? And yeah, I lucked out into getting a really nice big room. Was that a, to, was it a classroom or was it a, like a, like a teacher's lounge? Um, it seems like it was sort of a mixture of the two. Okay. Um, the actual classrooms are significantly yeah, larger and those are generally shared studios. It would be insane for me to yeah. work in there by myself. Uh, but this one, they seem to have done sort of not exactly teaching, not like sit down teaching, but they did like projects and stuff in okay, here. Okay, um, I see. It's not a hundred percent clear what and, it was, but and, um, you are in there by yourself, right? You don't have anybody in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't I don't work well with others. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> not not socially, not socially, but it's uh yeah. It's 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 hard to get my juices going when somebody else is doing their thing in the same yeah, space. Yeah, I totally understand. Like especially when they have different routines and you like Yeah. Yeah. Get it. Totally get it. Um yeah, it looks really cool. Very cozy apartment uh, um studio. And um mm -hmm. especially with like all the wood that's going on. That's like great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. Did, yeah. They, did they give you the? Did they? Well, why didn't they give you flat files? If it was a school, they should have like big flat oh, files. Oh no, no. <laughs> why did they? they no, should. they didn't have anything. <laughs> that would have been would have been nice. Yeah, I. No, we we cannibalized pretty much any of the old furniture that they had, but there was none of that oh, in there. Too bad. I mean, I in my school where I work, I uh, we have like this big, huge metal flat file thing, which is like two meters by one fifty or something like that. Oh, okay. Just the draws, nice. which is like super big, and you can yeah. put so much stuff in there. It's, it's amazing. I, I asked, "Hey, do we do we still need that in school? If we don't need that, could, could, could I get that?" <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, but uh, yeah, they said, "Yeah, we need that." <laughs> and I was out of like, where'd you, where'd you get those? Uh, those look like movie seats back there. Where'd you um, get those? eBay Kleinanzeigen. Oh yeah, so nice. That, that worked out well. It was yeah, fifty bucks cool. both of them, mounted already on the on the stand. Oh, perfect. they're from a cinema. Yeah, they're from cool. a cinema in Chemnitz. Okay, nice. So that's uh, that's cool. Uh, I was I really enjoyed that. That deal was a, that was a good deal that I that, that made that day. No doubt. Um, <clears throat> okay, since we s see uh, where you work, uh, now the question is, what are you working on right now? <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Well, you you mentioned already that uh, I've got something coming out with Vice. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, we, we got the go ahead from them to share a, a, a sort of a clip of that piece. Yeah, there it is. I, I just pulled it up. It looks already, it looks nice. already cool. I, I think, um, this, this is my take on what, what I'm seeing here on the teaser take. Um, mm -hmm. it, it reminds me a little bit of your, um, of this kind of tableau, um, like paintings, like by, mm -hmm. like Bible style. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alter, alter piece. Yeah, like the, yeah. I think you did this one for this, um, for this, uh, what's it called? The, um, this, uh, there was an editorial for where you painted the mm -hmm. saint, this kind of saint dude. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah sa saint CEO, that's what you called it here. And yeah, I think yes. this is, this yes. is what it reminded me of. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. I, I mean, that's uh, these sort of framing characters in, you know, halos yeah. and, various kinds of frames. That's a, that's a thing I love to use. And I, I really like that formal mm -hmm. symmetrical, um, arrangement for, for space for, it just works really well with posters. Yeah. I I've been using it more and more and more, the more posters I do, because it's so punchy. Yeah. Uh, but this one's been a blast to work on. It's so much fun. Right. Um, uh, is this, is this poster, would you, do, can you tell me what size it is or can you tell us what size it is or? Yeah. Yeah. It's 24 by 36 screen print. Great. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be portray i take it yes, yes. uh yeah you, you prefer portray i i heard that because like I, the, the fun thing was last uh last week or like two weeks no two two weeks ago uh, i had Catherine lamb uh, on and yep. she she said in when, when i asked the same question a speed run she said landscape but all her art is portray <laughs> she doesn't have landscape art right well i mean you know in the speed round with the like free association it's yeah, things I, pop out. I asked, you know, maybe that's revealing some deep 
deep seated subconscious preference of hers that she's not allowed. Yeah, to, exactly. Uh, That's what she said. I asked her like afterwards, and she <laughs> said, "Yeah, <laughs> I would yeah. love to do landscape, but nobody lets me." <laughs> But yeah, that's that's a great piece. Is there anything else you want to talk about that's gonna that's gonna come up? Um, well, I just did. We don't have uh, art to share yeah. for it, but I just did a poster for Wolfwalkers. Oh, you did a poster um, for Project Wolfwalkers? Fun. Oh my god, dude! Yes. And that should be coming out like anytime. Who 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 does that? Um, who releases that? Cartoon that's Saloon. Cartoon They're Saloon. doing it themselves. They're doing it themselves. Yeah. Um, I. I, the director, Tom Moore, I met him a couple of years ago uh, in Ireland, and uh, we we have a lot in common in terms of the way that we approach art yeah. and the things that we're interested in. Uh, we, we were both giving uh, talks. We, we sort of shared a stage with Ali Mercado, who I mentioned before yeah. as well. And, you know, even back then, he you know, he was just working on Wolf Walkers, and the idea was already there to collaborate on a poster for it. So they're just going to release that themselves. That should come out. Any any day, I guess. Um, very soon. As I, was saying, I mean, this this interview is going to come out next Wednesday. Um, so right. might already be out. Might by, already be out by then. So people, uh, keep an eye out for that if you haven't seen it yet. But I will definitely share it because Wolf Walkers was amazing, and yeah, I know yeah. sadly yeah. Soul took the took the uh, the Golden Globes, and I think they will take Soul will take yeah. the Oscars, but Wolf Walkers was yeah, better. I I think so too. Wolf Walkers was the superior film, but Soul was yeah. brilliant also. So but Pixar won so much. Get away, get away, Pixar. Yeah, and you know the thing for me too is just that like the thing with Soul for me is that it's very. Uh, I don't know what word to use other than didactic. Mm -hmm. It's like it's it, it tells you the lesson that it's going to teach yeah. you. And then it explains to you how it's teaching you the lesson. Like it's it's so direct that way that very transparent. That loses a little something in comparison to Wolf Walkers, which just puts you in this situation mm -hmm. and makes you feel with the characters. And for me, that's just a lot more powerful. But also, but also the animate uh, the animation. I think uh, I've uh, I've that. seen Soul yeah. basically the, this kind of style of animation, and um, yeah, Wolf Walker uh, only in the, the what was the other one before. The 2012. Well, they did Song of the yeah. Sea, Secret of yeah. Kells, yeah. Breadwinner. Yeah. That's so, so yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's the other thing too, right? Like, for, I think if I'm talking about um, who I think deserves the Oscar more and like which is a better film, uh, I try to think about it as much as possible outside my personal preferences and more just in terms of something closer to an objective standard. And the artwork is like, I just very much prefer traditional animation, but that doesn't take away from how beautifully exactly. they did uh, Soul. Yeah. Like, especially you know when he's, I find the the scenes when he's in in the like metaphysical realms are yeah. fine, mm -hmm. but the stuff when he's down on the street in the real world is really really breathtaking. Yeah. So, yeah, artistically they're both great, but yeah, I, I would have I would have voted for Wolf Walkers. Without hesitation. Alrighty. Um, so, uh, my idea, uh, or my, my, not my idea, my question is, <laughs> how do you approach a project or an idea um, when you when you try right. to work on it? There's 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 got, it's going to be a little two parter here because um, sure. you do editorial illustrations, but you also do movie posters. Yeah. Is is there a difference in that right. as well? So maybe you can elaborate. On that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there's definitely a difference. Um, how best to answer it? Well, in even in editorial and in, in just sort of more mainstream illustration generally, uh, one of the ways that you can think about it is is understanding what type of problem you're solving. Mm -hmm. And in editorial, you very often have a conceptual problem. So, you know, you're you're dealing with some kind of a, a more abstract concept that may not be located in a specific place or with a specific character. So, you know, it might be something like um, the economic situation in China. You know, that used to be a really big topic for, for editorial illustration a while back. Um, so that requires a different solution than a narrative problem, which is, you know, for a book or for a poster, it's usually like, there's this character in this situation in this place, right? Uh, and 
generally what I'm attempting to do with movie posters is do kind of both. So try to get in some way at, not necessarily like the main concept of the whole film, but a concept that I find is interesting or visually promising uh, in a way that you're still, you know, doing justice to the characters in the setting. Uh, but sometimes, you know, like for example, with this one for Vice, it's the conceptual content of Flash Gordon is minimal. <laughs> you know, there's not, uh, so it's mostly presenting the look and feel of the, of the piece. So that's the first thing is to figure out which direction you have to go. And then um, it's a matter of, you know, filling up some pages in a sketchbook, keeping it really loose, um, playing with ideas. And I'll usually start with text. I'll usually start by writing things down, you know, watch the film, take notes on things that, uh, that stuck out to me. You know, what's, what's this movie about? Um, you know, sometimes there's just something that's so obvious, like, like with Flash Gordon, it's like, I have to draw Ming the Merciless. Like, mm. right. Like that's the coolest thing about the whole film. Is, so is there also, uh, like, what, what do you prefer? Um, working on a movie you have not seen or maybe, maybe once, or is there right. like, like a movie right. you really right. enjoy? Um, it's hard to work on a film that you know really well, I find. Mm -hmm. Because um, you just, well, for me anyway, I put a lot more pressure on myself. Yeah. Uh, and I really enjoy discovering a new film in the context of, of doing art for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if I could say that I prefer one or the other. They're just, they're different, different beasts. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And uh, how, how much time do you plan in for a project? Is there, is there like, I mean, if you don't have deadlines, like what's your... Oh, if I don't have debt, well, I mean, if there's no deadline, then I don't plan any time at all. I just say, look, I'll get back to you when I've got a couple ideas that I really okay, love. Okay, let's, let's um, say you... And then I fuss yeah, with it let's, as long as, as Let's possible. say you have the idea uh, uh -huh. and um, you don't have a real deadline and you don't have any other projects. Like how, how long do you would, how long would you say is, uh, okay. In that case, nothing like that's a, yeah, that never happens, I figured, but, but. <laughs> I, I could probably, unless it's a, unless it's an image where for some reason I have to make a lot of changes yeah. or there's just an insane amount of detail yeah. to do, I could finish something in a week or a little over, um, if there's nothing else in the way, but there's always a thousand. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So um, usually like if it's done in two weeks from approval of sketches to the separations being sent out, I, I'm pretty thrilled. Yeah. Do you do um, separations yourself? I take it then. I do. Yeah. I do separations myself, uh, now, but I really like to work closely with the printer because, um, uh, there are sometimes things that I miss, you know, I'm still learning that part of it. Um, but yeah, I do. Okay. I do it myself. Yeah. And um, when it comes to your prints, how, how do you like to, like, uh, since you work close with a printer, how, how would you like to, uh, to have them printed? Uh, on what kind of paper? Is there a color spectrum? Or how many colors do you want in if it's a screen print, for example? Right. Right. Um, I don't have really strong feelings on paper. Um, the foil thing is kind of interesting. I, it's really, like, in a general sense, it's not really to my taste. Mm -hmm. Um, doing foils and stuff, but the the three times I've done foils, it was fun, and it, it, you can work with what it. What was it? Watch, but, Watchman Turtles, and then I did a I did a, a I self released an edition of one of my editorial oh, pieces, okay. which oh, is yeah, back the, there, the, the, the ayahuasca the thing. Ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a funny one because uh, that the preference, the public preference for the foil variant is unambiguous yeah, like right. <laughs> people really really love the foil on that one so um yeah colors like i would love to work with 15 or 20 colors if they would let me you know? <laughs> um, i'm very very fussy about color and it's really really important to me so the more that they will let me use the better it's going to look but generally it's 10 or less mm -hmm. um because you know it gets pretty so, expensive so we, you uh, you prefer screen printing to towards um, let's say G clay or litho. Um, 
yes and no. Like the the look of Gicle is is amazing, uh, and it's very nice with Gicle when I, I I don't have to do steps. Like that's just that much work that I don't have to yeah. to do. So you know the the return on my investment of time is better, uh, and it also means that I get to use as many colors as I want, which is mm-hmm. great. But um, I always had like I've always felt that digital prints are uh, like as a thing to have. They're just not as nice. You know, I, I like that with a screen print, I'm working with another artist mm-hmm. uh, and that the, the print itself is, is, is a product of, you know, hand craftsmanship. Um, and it's, you know, the fact that you can, I mean, obviously you can, you can boot like a screen print if you're really dedicated, but mm-hmm it's very difficult. So it, it has a, it has a feeling of more value and I like that it's a, that it's handmade. That, that means a lot to me. So it's, you know, there's a balance there. I see. Um, okay. And what would you say is your, was your most challenging idea or like artwork that you had to put out? That's a good question. Is that one of the ones where I sent you an image for it? Um, cause I know, you, cause I know some of these questions I thought about before. Yeah, I don't you, know if I answered you sent that. me the thin so. red line for question four. This is question four. Uh, uh-huh. okay. Yeah, no, that's a fair answer. Okay. Um, that one, that one, I, I sent Mondo a package of like a dozen sketches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after I sent them, I was like, uh, it's not in there. Like I knew it wasn't in there, that the right solution was not yeah. in there. Um, and I had already been bashing my head against the wall for that piece for, I don't know how long, um, partly because it was Mondo, right? Because, uh, even before I was really aware of the poster world, I had seen Mondo and been like, that's fucking cool. Uh, so I really wanted to do a good job. Um, but also it's just, it's just such a difficult film to, to encapsulate yeah. and, I was looking through a book of uh, J.C. Leyendecker mm-hmm. um, just to get an idea for composition, and that just blew it open. And once once I had once I thought of taking the image and pushing it up to the top of the page and opening up that big space at the bottom, uh, I realized that that was a way to talk about my. You know, the main thing about the movie for me is this idea of of two separate yeah. worlds. That there's like a, almost like heaven and earth. Like there's a world of light and the soul, and then there's the world of hell that they're in. Um, and from there, that broke it open. But it, it was it took a lot, a lot of bad ideas, a lot of mediocre ideas, and a lot of time to get there. So that was really hard. Okay, I see. That's that's a good answer. And um, yeah. But coming to like some future project, I mean, we touched uh, uh, on a yeah. couple, and I was wondering what is what IP or idea would you like to work on in in terms of in terms of um, I don't know older movies, newer movies, sports, music. Uh, I mean, we we talked about music, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, what's something yep. you want to put out? Um, well, there's loads of stuff. Um, the things I'll, I'll first answer with a sort of a half serious mm-hmm. answer, which is that. If I could somehow start a a sub scene of poster collection that was all obscure medieval manuscripts, <laughs> like alternative manuscript covers or whatever, yeah. uh, for really just bizarre old medieval yeah, stories, there's this, there's I would this thing called that. Kickstarter. Oh God, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I want to do uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to do that. Okay. Um, and I also, like I said, I just re-listened to, uh, the foundation, the original foundation trilogy by Isaac Asimov. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to do, I'd love to do a piece for that too. And also working on trying to figure out how to make that work. Yeah. And probably a Mando print would be really fun. because I love that show. Great. Um, uh, but sports or anything, would you do the sports? I mean, you've done music, so. <laughs> um, that's an interesting idea. I have, um, a few years back, uh, I did a series, a, a weird hockey series, okay. was sort of combining my love of ice hockey with my love of uh, fantasy and monsters and things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's like, one of those things. It's like Space Jam for ice hockey, right? Sort of, but you know, Space Jam is is spacey, and this is more like 
medieval. Right? Okay, so okay, okay, okay. A different take, but yeah, very similar in some ways. Uh, th- there was an, this thing when I was a kid called Blood Bowl. Yeah. It was like Warhammer uh, with little miniatures that people would paint yeah, 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 yeah. and all this, like an RPG thing. But it was football. It was like uh, yeah, I think you know, I know. American, American football yeah. with like ogres and mm-hmm. goblins playing football and wearing spikes and stuff. So it was like a mixture between Warhammer, so like Lord of the Rings, Rollerball, <laughs> and just NFL. And I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So it was a little bit like that. Okay, okay. That was popular in the sense that people always really liked the drawings, but mm-hmm. – I I never seriously believed there was much commercial potential in it. Uh, (laughs) Okay, I see. But yeah, I'm a big sports fan. Uh, Well, I mean, big, maybe not, but I am a sports fan. And yeah, I I think about it, but it it, it has to have like a weird take on it. You know, there's got to be something a little off center for me to be to be able to do my thing with it. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I see. Um, And uh, video games. I forgot to yeah, mention video games. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm actually working, I, I, I won't go into any specifics, okay. it's still uh, in its infancy, yeah. but I'm, I'm working on something uh, for a video game, and we'll see how that goes. I would love to do Zelda, I think that would be really cool. Mm, uh, okay, I see. So yeah, that's definitely something, like, I, I didn't play a lot of games when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hung out with my friends and I watched them play and I looked through the little manuals, you know, mm-hmm. they, mm-hmm. they used to come with the little manual and it had drawings of all the monsters and stuff. Yeah. I remember that, man. That, yeah. was, a, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. I loved, I loved that kind of thing. Um, so I, you know, video games or at least old school ones are close to my heart, but mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm by no means a gamer now. So yeah. What was, what would you say is your favorite game you've played over the years? I'll, I'll give you mine while you think. Uh, for yeah. me, it's uh, Knights of the Old Republic, the first one. I never played that one. 2003. It's available on iOS devices if you want to play it. Okay, nice, nice. Well, that's tough. Um, so the one that I played the most was NHL 94. <laughs> I, had, I had them all. I had, as, as, since 96, I had all the EA yep. games, all the sports. Yep. And some of the early FIFA FIFA soccer games, like the yeah. really basic ones. Yeah. Um, oh, that's that's actually, I I have a sort of irrational attachment to the Dutch national football team. Okay, why is because that? Because in FIFA, because they because they wore orange. And in FIFA, okay, okay. I always picked them because they looked awesome on the field. And I mean, they, they got a lot of great players over there. Yeah, years. that's true. Back, back then, definitely. I, my, my, what, what's your favorite FIFA? Well... I only really like my experience with FIFA is limited to having played it in God, I don't know, 1992 or something like really early. That's that's, that's um, way back. And yeah. then a few years back, like I play or before Corona, I played yeah. uh, soccer once a week with with some people. Okay. And at one point, I, they would go and play FIFA together, yeah, 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 yeah. beers and whatever. And I, I, I went one time and I tried to play you know, a modern video game and it's got like a dozen buttons. <laughs> what I, am I doing? I, I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. So I can't really judge, but you know, my heart goes but out yeah. to the really crappy old ones. It's yeah, it's I, I get it. I, for, for me it's FIFA ninety eight because it you okay. could play indoors. Oh it had like an indoor I mode, which that. was amazing. I I played That's nine ninety minute games in, in like inside a like a gym. Could you bounce it off the walls and stuff? Yeah yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's fun. I love that. Good, good times, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, now let's come to my favorite question of the podcast, and uh, you know which one that is. Uh, which classical artist would you like to see make right. a film poster, and which movie or franchise would he do? Yes, you're not catching me by surprise with this one. I've heard you yeah, ask. Good, good. I've thought about it. Yeah, that's, that's uh, good, because people were not prepared <laughs> sometimes. Yes. I'm going to say Arthur Rackham doing Arthur Rackham. Pan's Labyrinth. There you go. And um, by the way, people, uh, the wheels are turning. I'm telling you that the wheels are turning on the book idea. <laughs> and yeah, that, I mean, that would be a chance to do some pants elaborate, I guess. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> why, why would you pick it? And what, what, like, what's the idea behind it? Why, well, why this uh, artist? Arthur Rackham is, is, is brilliant. Um, he's one of my favorite artists. Um, my dad gave me a book of his from his dad, my, my grandfather. My Where is he from? Is he American or? Canadian? No, my dad's British. 
No, uh, I'm, I'm, I meant Arthur Rackham. So it's oh, Arthur Rackham is also British. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this hundred year old, uh, leather bound copy of Rip Van Winkle illustrated by Arthur Rackham. Oh, okay. Okay. And he, he just, I don't think I'd ever seen it around the house, but he was like, I found this and I thought you should have it, you know, cause my, mm-hmm. <laughs> his dad, although his name was actually not Peter, he was called Peter for some reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and it, it's got, it already had my name in the front. He's like, okay. it's already got your name in it. I think you'll probably like the drawings. And it just completely just blew my mind. I'd never seen anything like it. Yeah. Uh, so I love Arthur Rackham and just, you just look at his stuff and it's just, it's so, uh, organic. It's so weird. There's so much fairy stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, twisted trees. And it just seems like it's perfect for. Yeah. It seems like, I mean, the, 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 the image you gave, it, it looks very pan's labyrinthy. Yeah. So yeah. that's very cool to see. Um, okay. Then, uh, my next question would be, it's not really a question question, but do you have any tips or for beginners out there? Is there something you could say then tell them that maybe when it comes to hardware, software, utensils, social media, I don't know, um, you know, well, You're, I mean, there's a million things I could say yeah. to, to beginners. There's so many things to know, but I think the key thing is if you're trying to get better at drawing, you have to do a lot of it. Uh, so you, you just have to put in the hours and put out as much stuff as you can. Um, and there's two reasons to do that. One is, you know, just sketching and filling up sketchbooks, practicing the motion of it just gets you better at drawing, but that's not enough. If you're, if you're going to be doing it seriously, if you're going to be doing it for money or just for attention, even you also have to learn how to finish pieces. So you gotta, you gotta sketch, you just gotta move your hands and learn the motions and get better at it. And you have to eventually start making finished product and doing it as often as you can and just repeat, 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 repeat. Um, because it's a whole, it's a whole different ball game. Can, can um, I ask what, what, what do you mean yeah. by finished project in that sort of sense? Um, a lot of people, like I've seen, I, I have, I have taught as well and you see a lot of people who do a lot of drawing and nothing is a finished drawing. Okay. Right. It's filling up sketchbooks. Like maybe they haven't, uh, maybe they haven't attacked color yet, for example. Okay. Or maybe they're constantly hiding the character's feet behind a rock. Like, okay, you know, there's okay. a lot of things like that, that, um, that you can avoid while what you're focusing on is just, just the drawing. Because drawing is one thing, but building an image is another. Okay. And then, you know, once you're a professional and once you're a freelancer, you also have to start contending with solving a problem. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that if you haven't already learned to draw and finish a piece. Yeah. Uh, so those are the two things early on that you, that you really just need to practice. The other thing I would say, and I think it's very relevant for people who are young at at this moment in history is be really careful comparing yourself to other people. Um, if the, if the aim is to make your work better and you're not super, super hung up about your own work, like if you can take criticism and you're honest about your own work, comparing yourself to other people can be very productive because you can see where you stand and you can work to get better. But Uh, the problem with comparing yourself to other people, besides the fact that it can lead to you copying other people too much is, uh, we share the best stuff that we do. Right. And we share the stuff that makes, that makes us look good. So if you're looking at other artists and you think, uh, that they're just like worlds ahead of you and that everything they do is awesome. Um, that's largely because you don't see everything. Like you don't see how, how messy their life might be. You don't see how insecure they are about their own work. You don't see the work they do that didn't really come out that well. Um, and even later on when you're established and when you're actually working, it's really easy to look at people who are like younger than you or, you know, maybe people you went to school with and you get the impression they're doing better than you are be careful with that because who knows, like they might have access to more financial stability than you do. Um, they, they might have advantages that you don't have and they might have disadvantages that you don't have. You might have disadvantages that other people don't. So 
just be careful. Like everybody's comparing themselves to everybody else right now with social media. So, you know, watch it. That's, um, don't let yourself get uh, twisted up looking at what other it's, people That's do. a very good advice. Thank you for that. Um, last but not least, I want to give you the chance to let the people know where they can find all your social media, your website, all the plugs you need to plug here. And yep. um, uh, in the end, I want you to give some shout outs to either artists, friends, family, whoever you want to shout out. Sure. Well, um, as far as where to find me on the internet, it's not that difficult. I'm not in a lot of different places. I got my website at peterdiamond.ca. Um, I have a fan group on Facebook, which is a Peter Diamond art group. Easy to find, easy to join. And I've got an Instagram account, which is like Peter Diamond underscore art, I think. Yeah, it's mentioned, it's uh, mentioned uh, underneath your name. So. Yeah, easy enough to find. And uh, yeah, that's on Instagram. When I'm working on paintings, I'll often do a little um, over the shoulder painting videos, um, little short clips that I put up on my stories. So it's, uh, it's worth checking that out if you like that sort of thing. Um, yeah, as, as far as shout outs, I mean, it's hard to pick and choose because there's awesome, so many awesome artists out there. Uh, I will shout out to a friend of mine, Ali Mercado. I've mentioned him a couple times already and he does a lot of really interesting stuff and I'd love to see him doing more poster stuff. And I think a lot of people who dig posters would dig what he's doing. He's in Ireland. Uh, Matt Griffin is also in Ireland, and he and I have been uh, sort of taking our journey into posters on a parallel track. And then otherwise, I would I would shout out to the all the galleries that I've been working with. So you know, Vice and BNG and uh, Mondo and Black Dragon, and also to Tom Moore of Cartoon Saloon, who's hopefully going to be up for an Oscar any minute here, and uh, I got my fingers crossed that he's going to win it. Yep, uh, same, same, same with me here. Fingers crossed, Wolf Walk is gonna make it. Let's let's hope. Let's stretch out hope. But yeah, Peter, uh, thank you so uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been such a pleasure. Um, thank you. Really, really great talk. Really, you're you're such a you're such a positive personality. That it's always fun to talk to. And uh, yeah, uh, let's uh, have some more look at your artwork uh, in the future when you, when there's going to be a gallery release. Maybe we're going to have you on for one of those to talk us Perfect. through one of your artworks. That would be also very cool. And um, yeah, so people, check this man out. Uh, get him to work. You heard what he wants to do. So get get some commissions to him. Um, he wants it. He, he, uh, he definitely um, needs it. Everybody needs work. And uh, mm -hmm. so joke. always a good thing. Okay. Thank you, Peter, again for stopping by. It's been a pleasure, Tom. It's thank been you. such a pleasure. We will, and we Ciao. people see each other next week uh, with a release podcast with James and uh, releases are a surprise. So stay tuned for that. Take care, guys. Bye.